about quarter to nine in the morning. It's a sunny day. The sun is out and it's feeling really warm. It was quite rainy this morning. But the first thing I've come across down here is a pair of sunglasses. So how useful is that? Just found a massive great marble, at least I think it's a marble. It's quite pretty. Look at that. Let's see if you can spot something interesting. Oh there's a nice piece of um, like tile here. That's pretty. Almost looks edible, doesn't it? Now I have seen something that looks quite interesting around here, so I'm just going to walk around a little bit and see if you can see it. Now, it's just here. So let's take a look. It looks like some kind of token or something. off when I get home and have a closer look. I've just been looking around this really interesting area here and um, looking at all these bits of metal that we just saw. Oh that's a modern coin I think. Is that modern? Yeah that's a modern one penny. Oh, there's another one there. I shall leave those for future mudlarks. But I just turned over a stone down here and um, I'm going to re-turn it over for the camera. And saw this. certainly don't recognise it at the moment anyway. So I'm going to get that home and get it straight under the magnifying glass. It's quite worn so I'm not going to wear it down anymore. I know there are people that are going, don't touch it, don't rub it with your thumb. It's just the kind of a, an instinct, I suppose, to do that because you want to see what, what's on there, but I know it's not the right thing to do. But here it is on that side. And here it is on that side, and hopefully we can identify it, or well, you may have identified it already. A few weeks ago, David Nolan and I went out to the Thames Estuary for a walk and a little bit of a lark. And so that's where we're heading off to now. We found some great bits and pieces. It was a bit windy. And so some of the finds, um, I'll put some music to save you listening to the gales, but some of it's okay, but I think you'll like what we found. So come along with me down to the Thames Estuary now. And just over here, we've got a sunbathing it's beauty. Can you see it? Over there, by the water. I'm going to zoom in on him. Or her. Enjoying the sun. A seal. Enjoying the sun. Well, this um, walk along by uh, Longreach in Dartford has turned into a bit of a 
plastic collecting mission. And there seem to be rather a lot of toys. There's even a spider in this tree. Incy wincy spider. Well, you're coming with me, Mrs. Spider. Let's go out to this tree. There's a lot of thorny things around. There we go. Well, you're going to go very nicely with the rest of the Thames and the Thames Estuary orphans in my studio. We'll make some space for you. And the tide's on the way out, so all the waders are over there having a nice tasty afternoon snack. Oh, this is really deep mud here. You have to be extremely careful. What's this? It's quite nice. Now, just down here, it looks like this could possibly be a torpedo bottle, but it could be a semi-torpedo bottle as well, so we just don't know yet. It might have like a flat bottom on it, but I'm just going to find out. Oh, it's, um, oh, that's nice. <laughs> What's it got on it? Mumby. Is it Mumby? It is Mumby, yeah. <laughs> Who's Mumby? Mumby and Dadby. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of um, yeah. That's really interesting. Um, it would be nice to get it off of that bit of rock, wouldn't it? Put but it yeah, let's, we'll go and have a look and see what we can do without breaking the Mumby bottle. Meanwhile, whilst David is washing off the beautiful bottle, I've just found a little hand. Look at that a little hand. Well, David has now washed off the Mumby bottle, and um, here we are, look, Mumby, and it says on it, Maker to H.M. the King. Makers to His Majesty the King. How cool is that? Ooh, we've hit a little bottle patch here. I've just popped this bottle out and it's still got its top in, look. And it is, um, what is it? Oh, it's um, Lee and Perrins. Very nice too. Very nice too. I'll give that a little rinse later. I've just dug up a little bit of slate, but what's interesting is it appears to have something scratched on it. There, look, see. I'm going to investigate further. Well, I don't often um, look at bricks, but there are some quite interesting ones here, which would be in kind of interesting to look up. This one is a Bonnie Bridge.
just found a very nice piece of glass with some lettering in it. Looks like it would have said a head, so something nautical. Now just here I can see what looks like part of a pot and um, it looks pretty pretty um, pretty hopeful and you know it should be quite a nice big fragment I mean it's broken but that's definitely Roman Let's look at it. Just a nice fragment. Ah, lovely. found a big piece here coming out of the mud. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was a lot of it? I mean I can see it's broken but pretty exciting. I have seen something just here. It looks like some kind of pipe. Wow, this is cool. this bottle out of the mud. It's a really nice one and it's still got the stopper in the top look. But it's quite different. It's got um, D. Lyle and Sons. I'm going to take that one. It's still got the bottle stopper in it look. Now this is a beauty. Look at this. It's a lovely Victorian ink bottle and it's blue. Isn't that beautiful? Those little bits there where you keep your pens. That's going to be lovely when I've washed it. I think it's, no it's not cracked at all. Look at that! Isn't that gorgeous?
Oh, I can see two things down here. I can see a cute little blue bead, but I can also see what looks like a button here. Possibly a military one. Oh, I've dropped my bead. I'll pick it up again in a minute. Let me rub it on my trousers a sec. It looks like it looks like an eagle, or some kind of bird with a crown on top. Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? I'm going to um, attempt to clean that when I get home so we can have a closer look and see what it is. Look at this little piece of pottery here sticking out of the mud. It's got poor Dougie went and I imagine it says home, was sent straight to bed. And something else. So I'm guessing that's Dougie the duck. Do you know the ending to this rhyme? <laughs> oh, a little duck. Hello, little duck. Would you like a new home in my studio? Quack, quack. I think that means yes. Well, here's my bottle, the Harrods Stores Limited um, Hamilton bottle with London on that side. It's rather glorious, isn't it? But I'm not the only one who loves it. There is a little crab in there and I have to go on a mercy mission to take him down to the Thames foreshore. It's pretty rainy and nasty out there, but I'm going to take him down and put him on the foreshore and I just hope that he'll be able to survive. It should be okay. Let's see if I can get him to um, come to the neck of the bottle. There he is, look. You see? There he is. I can't bear the thought of him sort of perishing in there. So I'm going to take this bottle down to the river and um, going to let him out and I hope that he'll be able to find a new life down there. So let's go. Let's go and face this nasty weather and take this little crab, let's call him Charlie, down to the river. Okay, come on Charlie. Right, little Charlie, we are here at the Thames. So let's see if we can set you free. Let's find a little rock where I can put you. Where are you? There you are. Come on, it's time to come out. So worried about breaking this bottle. Well, it took a little bit of help because he was quite large actually to get out of the neck of the bottle. But look, he's here and he's out now. There he is. Hey, Charlie. Come on. I'm hoping he's going to be happy here in his new home. I'm just so relieved that, um, that I spotted him. Come on then. There he is. I think he's going to be okay. There he is. Okay. Good luck, Charlie. Everyone. I'm back from my crab rescue mission now and I'm going to just do a quick roundup of the objects which featured on today's video. 
starting with the items which I found in London at the beginning of the video. And firstly, uh, let me just say that if anybody knows anything at all about any of these objects, then I'd be very grateful to hear from you. Um, it's from people like you and your expertise and your knowledge, just like the people on Twitter and Instagram, and that I learn so much more about my finds. So um, do feel free to let me know if you've got any information. Now the first thing I found in London was this, well apart from my marble, which is here, nice big chunky marble, um, is this lead token here. I don't know much about lead tokens, this one has got a couple of interesting um, little symbols on it, which I'll show you on a photograph. I'm thinking it probably comes from the 1800s, possibly earlier. And I guess probably used either um, in a game as a as a playing um, token, or perhaps used in shops. Not terribly sure. The second object I found is this frilly edged coin here, which dates to 1999, and it's actually a Jamaican coin. Now my star find from London which was under the rock, just goes to show it's always worth lifting up rocks to see what might have been caught underneath, um, is this copper conda token. Now I didn't know anything about conda tokens at all, um, and if you go onto my Twitter account, which is at Tideline Art, where I posted it yesterday, you'll see the trail of information um, and the answers that people gave me when I was trying to work out what it was. Um, I've given it a little clean off now. It's very, very worn, um, so I'll also post a picture of one which is a lot more defined. But this token um, was issued in 1792 by Dunham and Yollop, who were goldsmiths in Norwich. And on it, I'm going to have a read here of this, um, on it is marked success to the city of Norwich on one side, and then on the other side, Norwich Halfpenny 1792 and it also says in very small letters payable at the shop of Dunham and Yollop Goldsmiths Norwich. Now what is a Conda token? I, I had no idea. Um, I've looked up on Wikipedia and it says um, they are privately minted tokens used due to the shortage of small denomination coins for everyday use. And from what I can gather, they were mostly used and issued in the 18th and early 19th century. So this is a copper halfpenny conda token issued in 1792 by Dunham and Yollops, goldsmiths in Norwich. Nice bit of Norwich history there. Now moving on to the Thames estuary where I was fortunate enough to find a marvellous array of bottles. I'm going to start with my favourite one, um, the home to Charlie the Crab, very posh crab, um, living in a Harrods London bottle. And here it is, it's cleaned up really nicely, I've got rid of the barnacles, and it's got Harrods Stores Limited on one side and London on the other. It would have held um, aerated water in it, I think, at one point. Now, Harrods was founded in 1849 by Charles Henry Harrod. So this bottle um, probably comes from the late 19th century. Um, it became Harrods Stores Limited in 1889 when the shares were floated on the London Stock Exchange. So we know that it's at least um, uh, dating back to 1889. Um, I've always thought that for such a beautiful, thick, well-made bottle, um, it just would have held so little liquid in it. Uh, it just seems such a waste. I mean, three little gulps and uh, everything would be gone. It wouldn't really have much in there to quench your thirst on a hot summer's day, would it? So much nicer than our plastic bottles. So that's that one. I can't say I blame the crab for wanting to live in it. Um, my next bottle is another very pretty one here, and it's marked with D. Lyle and Sons. 
and it came complete with the vulcanite bottle stopper, always a plus. And again, this probably dates to the late 19th century, I should think, and probably also held mineral water. Another mineral water bottle here, Mumbies. They were a healthy old lot around where I was searching, drinking all this mineral water. Mumbies, uh, makers to His Majesty the King. Uh, a little bit about Mumbies, um, which was established in 1851. Charles Mumby was a chemist and he had a contract to supply the Navy. And this type of bottle is known as a 10-pin bottle, and it's probably early 1900s. Um, this bottle here has got NACB on it, uh, which I think is National Army Canteen Board. It's rather nice, and I know somebody who will be, do a very good job of cutting the top off to make a very useful paintbrush holder. Cy Fines is particularly good at chopping the tops off these bottles and I think that's going to look really nice because I've not ever seen a cod bottle with NACB on it before. Um, also a rather beautiful bottle is this one here, this blue um, but sort of Victorian ink bottle with the two little bits here to lay your pen and it's not broken. Very pretty. A must have for all Victorians to put on your desk. I've got this sort of thick bit of slate here. I'm sure it has somebody's initials etched on it. I wish they'd etched a little bit more so that I could have found out a bit more about them. But it's still rather fun having um, a piece of slate with some old, a hundred year old graffiti on it. Um, I have my mystery button of the day, which I haven't uh, researched at all. So if you know what this button came from, please, please let me know. What else have I got here? Um, I've got Dougie, the little duck in bed, sent to bed. Uh, it would be fun to know the rest of the rhyme. Again, I haven't researched it, so if anybody knows um, the rest of Dougie's rhyme, then it would be fun to find out. Um, I particularly love finding Roman pottery shards, and I've got a beautiful selection here, and there's so many textures. They're so thick and chunky, and there's something very special about holding and touching feeling these, these pieces of, of pottery. They're very, very tactile. And I love to imagine them in, in a Roman kitchen um, full of Roman stew and Roman vegetables. And imagine the person who made them. I think my favourite piece here is this little shard with the dots on it. But there's also a lovely thick, chunky bit here um, which has a design on it. It looks as if something has been pressed into the clay. It's really lovely. I'd like to learn a lot more about pottery actually and soon I'll be doing a collaboration with a man called Richard Hemery who knows an awful lot about pottery so I'm really looking forward to that and I may well show him some of this pottery and see if he can tell me anything more about it. I have um, registered quite a lot of my Roman pottery with the Museum of London and um, I'll probably take along a few of these bits too, just to show them. So that's my Roman pottery. And I've saved um, my, well, one of my favourite finds to last. And of course it is a pipe, or at least it's pipe related, but not the kind of pipe that I usually find. I think this is the first. Um, it looks like a reptile foot or a reptile face. I can't quite work out what it is. I'm going to post it on the Society for Clay Pipe Research uh, Facebook page because I'm sure that if anybody knows what it is and where it came from, they are the ones. It does have a maker's mark on the side, but it's really hard to read it. It's quite worn. Um, 
it, it sort of looks like a reptilian foot with the folds of skin coming down but on the other hand it also looks a little bit like a face so do you know what this is uh, i've not seen one like it before so it's a very special find i've had some great pipe finds recently so i'm thrilled with this Um, and now I have got the message in a bottle, which I will read to you. Um, I have now found over 130 messages in bottles in the Thames, in the Thames estuary. And this one is from a little boy called Mike, and it was written on the 11th of August 2012. Now this is the message that was in the bottle that was featured right at the end of the video. You could just see through the plastic. And it says, um, it said, open me to reveal message. So it was written in 2012 by a little boy called Mike. And it says, my name is Mike and I am eight years old. I'm sending this message from Queen Elizabeth II Bridge. Please call me or my dad on these numbers and tell me how far away you are from me. Um, now, what I discovered that there was a second message in a bottle, in the bottle, um, from a man called Howard, who had also previously found it, um, and it's dated the 21st of March 2018. I found this other message in the bottle, washed up on the rocks near the path, maybe a mile from Erith. I contacted Miles and his dad, sent pictures and details, and at their request, um, replaced the bottle with a message in it. Now, what Howard does make a point of saying um, is that he picked up several other plastic bottles to take away to recycle and this is the only bottle that I will ever throw in the river. Anyway, good luck to Miles, he says. Howard, aged 51 and three quarters. So uh, I've now got these two messages in the bottle and I'm going to keep those and add them to my message in a bottle collection. I don't think I've missed anything. I often um, end and then I think, damn, I forgot something, but I think that's it. Uh, so thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you enjoyed that little excursion or the two excursions. Um, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. And I'd like to say thank you for all your support, your comments on my previous videos. I really appreciate them. And um, also for those in the know, you won't, all know about this so some of you will wonder what I'm talking about but my son um, who's in a band called Collateral won the chance to go and open up for Bon Jovi with his band on a cruise in the Mediterranean which is actually next weekend and there was a family and friends special package so I've been able to actually go as well so this is hugely exciting I can't wait to go and cheer him on but also the other very exciting thing is that I entered a competition to sing a karaoke song with Bon Jovi's band, the Kings of Suburbia, on the main stage. The song I chose was um, Who Says You Can't Go Home? And I sent my video in, you had to do a one minute um, audition video. I sent my video in, didn't expect to hear anything. There are 2000 people on this boat. And I got an email this week saying, you have been selected to sing on the main stage with the Kings of Suburbia, who says you can't go home? So now I've got to learn the words because they don't actually put the words up on the screen or anything. So now I've got to learn the words. I'll be doing that next week and I will get someone to film it. So I might, depending on how it comes out, I might share that with you if you're lucky or if you're unlucky. Anyway. <laughs> Back to mudlarking. Uh, thank you again and have a great week and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.